Hi, good morning, grade 11. So I hope that it's not blurry and that you can see. Um, a lot of you last night were panicking about the fact we're going to start geometry. Um, and when I said Euclidean geometry, you had a fit. Geometry is actually very easy. If it's taught well, I promise you geometry um, is not difficult. And the nice thing about circle Euclidean geometry, it's not the same geometry you did last year in grade 10. It's brand new. And it's, it's a lot of fun. And I promise I'll make it fun. I know that, uh, you know, I was, uh, how on earth are you going to make it fun? Well, certainly. I mean, I'm thinking circle. I'm thinking the And there's a very warm and fun connotation to sun. I'm thinking of the earth. Okay, there might be problems on the earth, but the earth is a sphere, which is not really a circle, but you can see the connection. I'm thinking of a smiley face, okay, because a smiley face has a very good connotation of happiness. So do you see this section on circle geometry is going to be fun? Okay, so let's take away all that rubbish and let's make sure you know the same language as me. If you um, don't get a time to copy anything down, I'm going to be working from page 211 in your textbook. So you will find all the information plus more from page 211. I hope um, it's not an old book I have. 20, I, don't, I can't read it. Let's just go approximately. Okay. Guys, you all know that could have a, if we do have a center, I have to say always given, I would say given O is the center of the circle. You can never in geometry assume anything, right? So let's say O is the center. Do you remember what we call this part of the circle if we walked around the circumference? Yes. So this is your circumference. And do you remember what we call that? Yes, you do. So, sorry, I'm having a bit of problem with ink today. I'm on ink fumes, but I noticed my two blues are working nicely, so I might have to do the whole lesson in blue. And um, just excuse that, but OA, from O to A, that would be a radius. We all know that from primary school. And if you take your ruler, and you extend your radius so that it goes through that center to the other side, and that being a straight line, who remembers what we call that? So AB would be called a diameter. Now a diameter is made of two equal radii, okay? Two equal Radio. Now, please take notice. <clears throat> One radius to radii. So, radii is the plural of. To my circumference. Well, that's not a straight line. I so let's try that again. In life, there are often little bumps that stop the road from being straight. Okay, so now do you see I've got a straight line? It goes from the circumference to another point on the circumference. So that is called a chord. So a chord is just a straight line that goes from the circumference to the circumference. 
Now let's go back to the diameter. The diameter is also a chord, because look, it's a straight line that goes through from one point on the circumference, but it, it goes through the center. That's what makes it a special, and it's, but if it goes through the center, it is the diameter. But this is not the diameter, this is just a chord. You could have infinite number of chords. Do you agree if I were to take my ruler and go from C to, let's say we go from C to B, okay? As that is on the circumference and point B also, B also equals to, is a chord. And I mean, you can see I can have infinite chords, right? Now, just point, just let's get this one out the way. This word, you never going to see it's very very rare but if you do get the the word secret if you did very uncommon but if you did a secret is just a straight line that will cut a circle in two places which means like from there to there would be a chord if that was ef so ef is a chord but if I start from a point outside the circle, let's say point M, and I cut my circle, go straight through it and cut it, then I would say from M to S, from there, there is a secant. Now, if they do say in a test that a line is a secant, okay, we know what it means, but basically the connotations it's just a straight line. So if you were using adjacent angles on a straight line or sum of angles in a triangle, you know it's a straight line. I always think of this one, I think of an ant. Now if I draw you an ant with its six legs and its antennae, you, know, you see that's why they call them antennae, but He's going to sneeze. He's going to go, hachu. Hachu. Now, I don't know how to spell hachu, but he's got a cold, like I've always got a sore throat. He is a sick ant. Secret. And. Secret. With. Okay, let's go back to my pens that work. Have you ever seen this before? And I would say, yes, you have. If you have a straight line that touches a curve at one point, who remembers what we call this straight line? Pretend the letter is T, A, I'll give you a clue, N. If that point is N, T, A, N is A? Tangent. All right, so a tangent is just a straight line that touches a curved surface at a point. And if they did write this in words, they would say TN, the line segment from T to N, is a tangent to the circle at point A. That means that is your point of touch. Because if you think about it, I can have infinite tangents to a circle as well. I could have a tangent that cuts my circle at the point C. Okay? You see, my purple is also dying. I just want to make sure you're all there. Just hold on. Okay. I can't hear anything today been very well behaved. Today I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Um, um, I can only do that um, honey and turmeric once a week. So hold on. All right, let's go back to the colors that work. So, so far, this is not hard. It's not hard at all. All right, but I'm going to rub this out. There's a lot more I want to do, but I think the picture has become cluttered. So, if I rub this out, 
and you didn't finish making notes, Muni Panikni, just go to page 211 in your textbook. All right, so let's look at a little bit more. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I just want to draw another circle. I use my famous plate. It has a slight kink in it here, hence when I draw my circle, you will always see that kink. But what is life without a little hiccup? Okay, now there's more things. Let's go back to the chord. Remember, a chord is a straight line. Let's just draw one from there to there that goes from the circumference to the... Okay, that's a chord. Now, a chord does something very interesting. It breaks the circle into two... Breaks the circle into two, we say segments, segments, right? Below this chord, do you see this part of the circle is a segment, but it is smaller, okay, on top of the chord, can I make it like speckled, like, like a speckled egg, <laughs> but okay, let, uh, this takes forever, speckles, but okay, do you see, there's my chord, Above it, that would be my major segment, and below it, we would call it the minor segment because it's smaller. But don't worry too much about the minor and major. You can see who's bigger and smaller. You've just got to know that this is a segment, and above that chord is the segment. Right, let's look at another terminology. I do need to change the color of my face. It's this. If I, where this chord touches the circumference of A, go towards B, but on the circumference, like that. That is called an arc, singular. All right? But some of you might say, but Mrs. Holmbo, um, okay, I've got this very strange brownie color, but at least it will be different than blue green. You could go from point A and take the long journey on the circumference to where you get to the other point. And that is still an arc. So you've guessed it. We would refer to that as the minor. Minor means smaller. Segment would be green because it's smaller. Okay, that's the minor segment there, and from there to there's the minor arc. And then this would just be the major M A J O. Uh, I think it's a R or U R major. Okay, I'm not too sure. But this would be the major, the speckledy part would be the, um, just go my blue, the major segment. And that there would be the major arc. Okay, so an arc on the circumference, and it goes from one point of your chord to the other point, but on the circumference. Okay, so now we know what is a segment. And we know what an arc is. Who can tell me a diameter would cut my circle into segments? Would one be bigger than the other or would they be the same in size? What do you say? Or have you all been muted out? Okay, I'm I'm just saying, if, um, if you have a diameter, which is a special chord, it would break the circle into two segments. Do you agree? But my question is, would one be bigger than the other? No, ma'am. Or be equal. No. They'd be equal. They'd be equal they man. would be equal. Well done. So if that is my diameter, because I tell you O is center, 
And I have to give you a point, for example, EF lies on the circumference. Well, they might say not E, E and F. Because they point, lie on the circumference of the circle. I'm just going to, then you, segments are equal. One would not be minor and major, they would be equal. All right. So we've now looked at segments. Now, let's look at one other thing. You might have heard, what I'm going to say now, in grade 9 or slash 10, We're not going to do pie charts in this section, so Muni panic me. But a pie chart, if you remember, looks like a pie. And I want you to center. How do we cut a pie? We cut a pie into like wedges. So if I'm going to take my knife and cut, cut a piece of pie, do you agree that I would like cut it there, radius, and I would cut it there. That's another radius. And then let's say my pie is blue, because it's blueberry pie. But now I cut this piece out, this piece. I'll go over it in, in, um, on, in, fumes, what color is this? Orange. Let's see if orange works. So if I cut this out and take it away, this piece of pie or cake is called a sector. A sector. So someone said to me yesterday, I was having a chat to them, and it's a lovely life lesson. They said, your life should be broken into equal sectors like a pie chart, but they must be all equal. Well, your sector is too big. Like I can tell you now, I realized before, um, you know, I work at Greenside, I've come and teach extra mass till eight, Saturdays, Sundays, and if, one sector is too big, the wheel won't be able to turn. And that means your life balance starts falling apart. So I hope you remember that little story. Try and keep your sectors balanced so the wheel of life will turn. Okay, so now that we know what a sector is, let's go a little bit faster. I've just got to show you now how we talk about angles. All right, so look carefully, because this section is very much about angles, but angles inside a circle. All right, so let me just draw the circle again. Right, I want to draw a chord. This time I'm going to draw the chord from there to there. I don't want you to always think it's directly horizontal, as long as it lies on the circumference. Sometimes they say, Let's say there's a C there, they would go A, B, C. If they say the circle's name is A, B, C, that is another way of telling you that these points are circumference. There's another word they could use, I think we might be slipping. We would say A, B, and C are, are concyclic. Now that just means that they lie on the circumference. You just might see these words pop up in the exams. They might say in the instruction, points A, B, and C are concyclic. Guys, I'm just gonna straighten the camera. I feel like I've tipped it with slowly, yeah, slowly the press stick is bending. Okay, there we go. Now, watch this carefully. Let's say I now join. Let's put the center in for fun. We just put the center in. But then I'd have to say O is the center. 
They always have to write in words given what you see in your diagram. Now watch carefully. Let's say I, I go from A to the center. Do you agree that's a radius? Yes, you do. Do you agree if I go from the center to B? Do you agree that's a radius? Yes, you do. What do we know about radii? They're equal in length. Okay. But now check this. This here is an angle. Angle A O B. Now let's pretend that angle is 80 degrees. Okay, so let's A O B. The angle A O B is 80 degrees. Now, this is a very fancy word, but you must know it. They will talk about you have a AB and the chord AB tends, don't panic, subtends 80 degrees at AOB or whatever. Now, that, that word, subtends, okay? It just means to hold up. Now, I'm not saying when a bank robber and his mask goes to the shop and he holds up the till, or the assistant, not that hold up, the, this hold up. And you hold something up. So, then, if you put your one finger here, yes, ma'am, Tom? Um, the camera. The camera. Mm. Sure. Well done, chickens. At least I know you're there. My press stick is uh, <laughs> doing its own little thing today. But thank you. Can you still see the camera? Because I have a red message on this. I can't read what it says. It says, leave meeting. Are you still there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, cool. Sorry about my yes, press stick. Today it is doing the strangest things. Jeez. <laughs> okay. All right. I can't guarantee that won't happen again, so just shout out if that happens again. So, if I put my one finger at the point A on the circumference, and go on the circumference to point B. To be, that is an arc. So that is an arc. And that would obviously be a slightly longer distance. If I went a straight line from A to B, that is a chord. Now, if you look here, do you see if I use my fingers, we would say that this chord, AB, is holding up this angle here. Of 80 degrees. It's holding it up. It's subtending to hold up. But if this is Harry Potter and I go Expelliarmus and then suddenly that chord just disappears. Poof! Like his invisibility cloak. I could still say that arc. I could say arc. A, B. Subtends. 80 degrees at A, O, B. So arcs and chords. Let's put my chord back. Dish, magic. Okay? As long as it's a straight line. So chords, that's chords, and that's my arc from there to there. They subtend, hold up angles. All right. So now I've covered all my terminology. Let's see what you remember. Okay, and let's put it to work. Now, the textbook might do this in a different order to me. It doesn't really matter the order, but there's still a lot of information I need to teach you. So let's just start at the beginning. Let's say you have a circle. Right, there it is. And I'm going to make O center. So in the given, I would definitely say O is the center of my circle. 
Right. Now I'm going to draw you a chord. For fun, we'll just do it here. But remember, the chords, as long as they are on the circumference, could be anywhere. On the side, upside down, etc. Now, if you see a line going from the center of the circle, and you are also told that this line, OD, is perpendicular to your chord, AB. Now, please take note, <coughs> excuse my voice, OD is not a radius, because a radius has to go from the center to the center. So, what have we done so far? I'm saying, in the, I'm saying O is the center, and I'm saying, here, you don't told necessarily that um, AB is a chord, but they will AB is a chord because they want to tell you it lies on circumference, or they would say O is the center of circle AB. Do you understand? So that we know that A and B lie on the circumference. Now, if you see that, and this is also notice given, so I'm going to call this angle D1, D2. Then there's something you must know that happens. Now, initially, you've just got to learn it, but I will show you why. All right? So, if this is, for example, you know how we did this in primary school? The statement and the reason. Now, remember, reasons in geometry are half the marks. So if you leave out all your reasons, you'll never get higher than 50%. If you see this, and there's something you must know. I'm going to write it up in green just so it stands out. But you must know from A to D will equal the same length as from D to B. In other words, D would become the midpoint of that chord. Right. So if you see a line from center coming perpendicular, to a chord, um, you, have, you know if I set that chord. Yes? You have 10 minutes left. Okay. It's no rush because we're going to carry on doing this. Obviously, there will be tomorrow. It's a public holiday. But then I'll meet you again on Wednesday. But remember, the time is different. Haja will remind you. But thank you. So you told the examiner that AD equals the length of db you would get a mark for that but then watch the reason you cannot invent your reasons do you understand that you've got to use the reason that i give you and you would say because line from center what about that line perpendicular to court it's quite a long reason but you have to use that exact reason all right Think about it. With reasons, you, you don't give conclusions. In other words, I see O is center. I see that we have a chord. I see we have a line from center perpendicular to that chord. That's what I see. My conclusion is this line will bisect that chord equally. So I tell them the length from A to D equals the length from D to B. But my reason is what you're given. It's always what you're given. The line from, from means where does it start? It starts from center. What about it? Given it was perpendicular to chord, therefore it bisects the chord. But we never put the therefore. Think about when you say sum angles triangle. That's your reason for the three interior angles to add up to 180. You don't say as your reason sum angles triangle equal 180. You never give the conclusion in geometry. Your reason is the beginning part of the sentence. Okay, we might be going a bit skewed, but this works both ways. So I just want to show you quickly, because we still have a bit of time. If I have a circle and I'm given O is center, all right, and I'm given watch. Any chord, and I see a line coming down 
and they tell me that, right? So given, they are gonna tell me that AD equals to DB. They could also say D is the midpoint of chord AB. They have to tell you O is the center. So if you ever see that, your conclusion is this is D1, this is D2, they will be equal. They'll be 90 degrees. They will be perpendicular. So if you want to tell me that D1 equals to 90 degrees, or if you want to say D1 equals D2, and they're both 90 degrees, now your reason is what you were given. So you say line from, from where? Center. What were you given? You say to midpoint chord. All right? So you don't say is therefore perpendicular. Now, a lot of students understand the importance of giving. I am going to. Exactly. The government gets teachers, these are the accepted reasons. And if I comment accepted reasons, there's no set. So don't invent your own. Now, when we have finished this section, I will eventually be giving you very nice notes of all the reasons in a diagrammatic form. So you don't have to panic or anything. There is quite a bit to learn with this section, but it's not hard. Now, in geometry, we also get proofs. Do you remember last year you had to maybe, they would say, given a quadrilateral, if both pairs of opposite sides are equal in length, prove it's a parallelogram. Do you remember you had those proofs? Now, each one of these has a proof that they could test you in your exam. And obviously, I will do these two proofs in our next lesson. I don't want to rush this. But if in the meantime, you would like to just look, they're on page 212. So everything I've done here is on page 211, 212, and you'll see even 213 and maybe 214. Okay, now there's a lot more to do, but that's all I'm going to start with. So your only homework is just to read. If you don't mind, just read pages. Let me just see how far, let me show you what they look like, just in case the page is different. It starts, yeah, yours should be the same. It starts there with the labeling, and then there are the two for these two. But I will do them on Monday. And then they explain some things, but you can read that. But I mean, you can start looking at the easy type of questions that could be asked. All right? And they get a little bit harder, but don't strain too much. Maybe just get to the end of there and don't worry too much about that explanation. All right, we still here? How many minutes have I got left? About four minutes. Four. Uh, okay. No. Three. All right, it's not really worth starting something new, but along with the notes that I'll eventually be giving you all, I will also be summarizing the proofs for you. Here are those two proofs, and then we're going on to, uh, there will be a lot of other proofs. So all I want you to say in such a horrible, croaky voice, and I apologize, is, <coughs> is that, um, so far, I don't think this has been hard. Yes, there's some new words, but you know, when you were in grade R, you were learning new words like cat and dog. It wasn't hard, it was just new. This section is fun. I don't want you to be scared of it, and it must become your friend. I had one student, oh, I don't know if it was last year, I think it was last year, her algebra wasn't that strong, but she loved this section. And she pulled her mark from term one, because of mainly algebra, okay, so let's say term one her mark was 46. And then we did the circle geometry. Obviously we finished it. She pulled her mark up to a 76 in term two. 
because she was so good with geometry. Okay, so don't be scared of geometry. If you want to know a secret, geometry is how I passed grade eight to nine. Because when I was in grade eight to nine, my teacher was terrible and I didn't know the difference between x plus x, which is obviously two x, or x times x, which is x squared. So if you don't know the rules in algebra, your algebra is bad. But geometry is very visual. You just have to learn your reasons and then